Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain what a function is in the math context, and uh, we'll do a few examples as well. So the big idea behind a function, generally speaking, is it's something that takes x values as input, and then it sort of gets processed by this black box, which is your function, and then it spits out particular values depending on what you put in. So for instance, um, one function you might have is how much you're getting paid. And maybe you're getting paid, say, $10 an hour, just to make the math easy. In that case, your function is, your f of x is, you take your x value and you multiply it by 10. So your function is 10 times x. And so in this way, you put in, I don't know, five hours that you worked. And so you put five into your function. And Inside your function, so you're imagining, you're, you're imagining your, your function here is your f of x, and when you put 5 into your function, what does your function spit out? Well, in this case, f of 5 is 10 times 5, and so it spits out 50, saying if you work 5 hours, you get paid 50 bucks. And what makes functions different from, from relations is that you always get the exact same y value no matter what you put in, and it's always just one y value, right? If I, if I work eight hours, there's no question, am I, do I get paid $80 or do I get paid some other amount? It's always the exact same $80 every time. And so that is what makes a function, um, a, 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 it's called a bijection between a domain and a codomain, which is like fancy math language. But the idea is that that all possible x values that make sense for your function is your domain. And then all possible y values you get out is called your range. Range is usually the word we use in high school, uh, but in higher level math, they instead call it a codomain. I think that they thought it was too confusing for students to have domain and codomain sounding too similar to each other. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to call them domain and range because we're, we're in high school. But... Every x value in your domain, every x value that makes sense for your function, gives you exactly one y value in your range. And so if we talk about, let's, let's, let's sort of graph that idea of pay and hours and see if we can figure that out on this graph. Okay, so this is our x, which is our hours worked. And this is our y, which is our pay in dollars. Okay, now I'm just going to be really, really lazy. I'm just going to do $10 per box up here. Right, and this is going to be 30, and this is going to be 40, and so on, right? 50, 60, 70, and hours is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now, the reason why I'm actually graphing this is because I want to talk about the domain and the range of this function. If you work zero hours, how much are you going to get paid? I don't know about you, but if I work zero hours, I'm probably gonna get paid zero, right? So zero hours, zero pay. One hour, 10 bucks. Two hours, 20 bucks. Three hours, 30 bucks. And theoretically, if you work half an hour, most places will pay you for the half hour, right? So you could have a point in the half hour. In fact, we could sort of fill in a straight line straight up here. And theoretically, you can go as high as you want. If you, you know, figured out how much you worked over 10 years or whatever, and you've got thousands of hours, that's fine. You can multiply thousands of hours by 10, no problem. And even like for some ridiculously huge number of hours, let's say you had every single person in the entire world working for 10 hours on something, you'd get up to 70 billion or something, right? So, so like, and that would make sense. You could still, you could still figure out how much people get paid if they worked a total of 10 billion hours at 10 bucks an hour. And so this goes on forever in the positive direction for x and the positive direction for y. And so that means that our domain, our domain has, uh, can go up to positive infinity and negative infinity, but doesn't make sense to work negative hours for negative pay. Probably not, right? Like I don't even know what negative hours are. So in this case, we could say that our function f of x is 10x, and our domain, we can simply write that x is greater than or equal to zero. And our range is y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so this means that our x values, our hours worked, has to be greater than or equal to zero. And our pay has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, so that's, that's the idea of 
a sort of a straightforward function. So let's, let's give a non-example. What's something that's not a function? Okay, here we go, that'll work. So like what happens if we have a graph, let's do this sort of visually. What happens if we have a graph of like a circle? Okay, so we've got a circle on our coordinate plane. Let's actually try to make sure it's a circle. So if we've got a circle on our coordinate plane, is the circle a function? So like, let's look. This point here, let's just assume it's one per box. That's a point at five comma five. But there's also a point here at five comma, let's just say it's negative five, okay? So that means that this one value x equals five gives you two different possible values. So in this case, you've got five going into your, your your box, and I'm not even sure if this box is a function yet, so let's just put a question mark here. And that five gives you positive five, or it gives you negative five. And because you can get two different values here, this is not a function. Okay, and this is something called the vertical line test. If you can draw, if you can draw a vertical line through your function, or through your relation rather, and it goes through two points, then it's not a function. So anywhere here, right, if I draw a vertical line, it goes through two points, not a function. Versus our first example, right, our first example was just a straight line. And if I draw a vertical line anywhere on a straight line, doesn't matter where it is, I'm only ever going to get one point. And so that's why our pay f of x, the, the one we had above, 10x, is a function. So if we think in terms of, uh, Let's do it in terms of points. Let's say we have a coordinate graph, and we'll just assume it's one per box, just to save time on labeling. If I've got just individual points, like a scatter plot, an XY scatter, like this, this is some sort of data that I've got, or what have you. Now, this right here is a function. This, this scatter plot, this connection of points is a is a function. And we can go through, like this point here is like negative four, negative one. So we could actually make a chart for this and say this is the x and our y value we get from the function operating on the values of x. Okay, so negative four gives us negative one and negative three gives us positive two and negative two gives us positive, I think five, I think, right? And, and so on. And for every single value every single value here, you get only one y value, okay? And so this is a function. Now, if I have a, another set of points, oh, I don't know why that's so small. There we go. Okay, if I have another set of points, um, let's say like this, there's our axes, sure. And in this case, I've got points here and here, right? I already know that this is not a function because I'm getting multiple y values on a single x value. This x value of negative two gives me positive two for y or positive six for y. And since there are two points here, this scatter plot, whatever this data represents, is a relation and not a function. Now, just sort of a, a step back, the, the, I, the, the reason we care about having these single y values is that we can then do some really interesting things with functions. It allows us to do uh, calculations and evaluations on functions. We can add them, multiply them together. There's a whole bunch of stuff you guys are going to do through grade 10, grade 11, grade 12 math with functions, and even on into university for those of you who continue to study math. And a lot of the things we want to do with functions depend on what's called the uniqueness the uniqueness of your output, uniqueness of your y. And if you have if you have something like like if you have something that takes x values and gives you a whole bunch of different y values, say y1, y2 and y3. If you can get three y values for one x value, then that makes it really hard to evaluate and analyze. It makes it very hard to actually do any calculations or analysis on this thing because you you literally don't know. Like if you have x equals and it gives you either two or five or seven, you're like, okay, so I've got, I, I don't know what I'm, what I'm evaluating anymore because, because there's so many different possible, there's so many different possible values, you actually don't know which one you have. And you end up with really awkward things. Like when we're analyzing circle graphs, 
you're always talking about like y equals plus or minus you know five right plus two or something right you always have this idea that it can be it could either be positive five or negative five or both at the same time or neither and it gets very confusing and often we don't want to worry about that and so that's why we want to only define functions in terms of single y values for a given x value Okay, that was a bit of a rambling long video, but I had a few students asking questions about what a function is, and hopefully that makes a little bit more sense now.